Hey everybody, welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. My name is D'Lo and I've got another video for you. Today is going to be a really special day because we are doing the Fan Casting Summit number 7 and we are casting the MCU Spider-Man Rogues that have not yet occurred. Now, for those of you guys who may not yet be aware, there are tons of villains in the MCU, but there are still six specific villains that are big villains that are fan favorites everybody loves i love them you love them we all love these characters and they have not yet happened inside of the mcu 18 of the best fan casters on instagram have come together for a massive collaboration so that we can give you guys a super poll from all kinds of professional fan casters i say professional because that's what they do all the time fan casters and you guys can be the judge you guys can decide who is your favorite fan castings from this list, from this massive ranking of all these actors. 18 guys come together with two votes each for six roles. And we're gonna determine which actors are most wanted for the roles of the villains in the Spider-Man universe. So let's not waste too much more time, guys. I wanna jump right in. And first of all, if you guys haven't already well, uh, been here, welcome to the Stuff of Legend show on YouTube. Please subscribe if you haven't already, hit the like. Uh, if you like this kind of content, I got plenty more where that's coming from. So I'm going to bring you guys tons of fan casting content and be sure to give a shout out to your favorite casters along the way, because this is going to be a big video. Get your popcorn, get your drinks, whatever snacks or a comfortable seat on the couch, whatever you got to do, hook this thing up to your Roku device, or your smart TV or your PlayStation, whatever you got to do, get comfy because this is going to be a big one. All right. So you guys like Spider-Man? Well, check this out. We have for ourselves Fan Casting Summit 7, Spider-Man Rogues. We're going to be casting today Green Goblin in the MCU, Kraven the Hunter in the MCU, Dr. Octopus, Rhino, Lizard, and Electro in the MCU. So, these are the guys we want to see go up against Tom Holland's Spider-Man. So, here's the pictures for you guys, so you guys can see all your favorite villains in case you did not remember them by name. And here are the 18 fan casters, myself included as the host down at the very bottom. You can forget that. You can just check everyone else out. These guys are legends. Um, love these guys to death. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the Stuff of Legends Fan Casting Summit number seven and subscribe before we get going. Ready? Let's start. All right. First up is Wave 88 Welcome back, sir, to the Fan Casting Summit. Thank you so much for participating in this summit event. First, we've got for Norman Osborn Green Goblin, Matthew McConaughey from Dallas Buyers Club and Interstellar. Amazing, amazing actor. And look at his facial structure as well. I think Matthew McConaughey is not only a very popular uh, actor choice for this role. A lot of people have seen this, um, but I think he is one of the best choices that you could do, not just on acting talent, but combine that with the physical um, appearance and his stature is pretty great as well. He's a big guy. Um, I think that would lend itself to a very, very scary and creepy Green Goblin. Then you also have Christoph Waltz, an amazing actor as well. Alita Battle Angel and Django Unchained. Very, very talented, hard-hitting actor. But I think between the two of these guys, I'm going to go with Matthew McConaughey. Let me know in the comments which guy you would prefer for this role. Next up for Nave Wave 88, we got Craven the Hunter. Joe Manganiello from Justice League and Spider-Man. If you don't remember him from Spider-Man, this was the Tobey Maguire one. He played Flash Thompson the Bully way back when. He was a lot smaller then. But he also played Deathstroke in the Justice League at the end, in the end credit scenes. Um, man, I really was hoping they were going to do more with him. And I hope that they do eventually do more with Joe Manganiello as Deathstroke. That would be absolutely awesome. But in the meantime, I do think he'd be a fan freaking tastic Craven the hunter this guy is a giant i think he's something stupid like six foot six uh really big guy beefed out you guys know him from magic mike um xxl um and uh and a bunch of other stuff is great great actor hilarious rampage even and then steven kapichik or stefan kapichik sorry if i said that wrong from deadpool 2 and big miracle this guy uh, he plays a Russian incredibly well. And that's one thing about Craven the Hunter. He's not just any hunter. He's a Russian. He is the half-brother of uh, of Dmitry. Uh, what, how do you say it again? Smirch, uh, Smirch, 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 I don't know how to say the last name. But Dmitry is the chameleon, okay? So uh, the 
the chameleon is the half brother to craven the hunter and they are both russians um so very very big deal uh the historical context there but yes stefan kapichik could absolutely knock this role out of the park but i'm gonna go ahead and give it to joe manganello i think joe manganello to me is the one i would prefer to see in this role next up uh we have dr octopus dr octopus paul giamatti from the amazing spider-man 2 if you don't remember what he played in spider-man 2 he played the rhino and it was a very odd depiction of the rhino very like uh prison break uh on on uh he, he was like it was on narcotics or something crazy um and then you all uh, I, I thought he didn't get a good shake in that film i thought that the role that he was given did not fit at all but that does not mean he's a great actor and that and, and uh, this doesn't mean he's not a great actor it, to me paul giamatti is a phenomenal talent I think he would crush the role of Dr. Octopus, and it's much better suited for his talents than a role like the Rhino, um, where you have to be physically imposing, uh, which Paul Giamatti is not. Um, and Ian McShane, I think, is a, is a really fun actor. I haven't seen a ton of his work. However, I do think that he would do a really good job playing more of a mob boss, and for this reason specifically, I am going to definitely go towards Paul Giamatti for this one. So, Paul Giamatti for me. Let me know what you guys think down below. Next, for Nave Wave 88, we have Rhino, Jason Statham from Fast and the Furious, Hobbs and Shaw, and The Meg, which I think is a good role. I think he's very physically intimidating. You look at this guy and you just sense, I don't want to mess with him. Um, but then there's also Half Thor Julius Bjornsson, who is the literal definition of physically imposing. I mean, the guy is just staggering literal viking uh one of the biggest guys in hollywood physically largest guys in hollywood and he was the world's strongest man at one point so this guy is a beast an absolute beast from game of thrones kickboxer retaliation he's known for being the guy that is the guy you cannot mess with and for that reason i'm definitely going with half thor julius bjornsson i think he definitely needs that role and for and even though you know he may not speak uh english very very well i don't think it's that big a deal it's not like with Sabretooth, where for Sabretooth, you don't want someone that's dumb playing Sabretooth because Sabretooth isn't dumb he's he's vicious he's he's uh scheming he's constantly um he's actually quite intelligent but he's primal there's a difference though with rhino rhino is a dummy rhino is a meathead and i think half thor could knock that out of the park um no matter what language it's in <laughs> so for that reason i'm going with half thor next up we've got curtis connor's the lizard uh the the friend of peter parker and the enemy of spider-man this is a very good cast i really like both of these michael shannon i love him from man of steel pearl harbor amazing i love this guy giancarlo esposito though he is i i think possibly the best tv actor alive um i won't i won't go as far as films but tv acting i think he's the best alive um i will say giancarlo esposito not just for talent um i know lizard is traditionally white and i often try to lean into comic book accuracy um that's very important to me visual accuracy aesthetic historical cultural all this all that is very very important to me but that being said i would gladly trade that for the for the type of talent that we would get from Giancarlo esposito i really like this guy so in this specific role i think that it would be worth bending a little bit um, plus he doesn't have any relationship ties to anyone genetically in the story of spider-man that would change other characters or or stories you know what i mean it wouldn't be like kurt connor's is a father to a daughter who you know then you have to change the gender and or, i'm sorry the race and all that stuff so it, it's not impactful to the story one way or the other so i like that john carlo esposito is my vote what do you guys think michael shannon or john carlo tell me in the comments next up we've got maxwell dylan electro glenn howerton very very fun choice this one is not one i see all the time this is a very unique cast in glenn howerton it's always sunny in philadelphia and ap bio the guy is um he plays like a really funny guy eccentric he can play eccentric but 
what you need for electro is just downright crazy like you need someone that is just on the fritz all the time basically um someone that is tweaking out but not on uh not on narcotics or any of that but just on how energized he is he's literally the energizer bunny so i think i might actually stick i'm gonna i'm gonna go with and stick with aaron paul on this one because aaron paul he looks perfect for that i think he's got the right personality um and he can play he can play like a bad dude really well so i'm going with aaron paul next up uh, let's take a look at the full roster team from Nave Wave 88. So this is how it'll go for everyone at the end of their uh, their set, I'll call it. And uh, at the end of the set, I'll read off Team 1 and Team 2, and you let me know in the comments which team you like the best. So, Nave Wave 88. We've got Team 1 is Matthew McConaughey, Joe Manganiello, Paul Giamatti, Jason Statham, Michael Shannon, and Glenn Howerton. Team 2 is Christoph Waltz, Stefan Kapicic, Ian McShane, Hafthor Julius Bjornsson, Giancarlo Esposito, and Aaron Paul. <sighs> oh, this is a really tough one. Um, I feel like both teams are incredibly well balanced. I really like these teams, but I will say, I think I like, I like the first half of team one better and the second half of team two better. Ah, uh, this is a really tough one. I think I'm going to go with team one actually on this one, even though, you know, I'd have to be giving up half Thor, Giancarlo and Aaron Paul. I think it's worth it to me to get Paul Giamatti in there as Dr. Octopus, um, Joe Manganiello as Craven, and Matthew McConaughey as Green Goblin. So those, that's my pick right there. This is a great casting. I love both teams. What do you guys think about Nave Wave 88's teams? Let me know in the comments down below and let's move on to the next fan caster all right next up we've got agent fan cast welcome back to the fan casting summit it's good to have you back my friend all right so let's take a look at your choices first up for green goblin we've got pedro pascal from the mandalorian this is the way and game of thrones very very talented actor and jason isaacs from the patriot and the oa now jason isaacs is one of the best villainous actors of all time uh, very few people have the have that ability to just capture evil or sinister with the look of the eye like Jason Isaacs does and in, it's funny because in his interviews and in reality he's a really nice dude like a really good seemingly good dude but um, man on screen he's just he's uh, sinister and I think that would be really great for Norman Osborn he is one of my choices in fact but I will say um, Pedro Pascal is a a good choice for this not not necessarily because of the mandalorian which i love not because of game of thrones which pretty much everybody loves but because of what we're kind of seeing from the trailers of wonder woman 1984 because in that he's playing an evil rich white billionaire uh uh philanthropist uh genius in in maxwell lord so he's playing maxwell lord in DC in Wonder Woman, that would translate literally perfectly to Norman Osborn. Um, so I think, yeah, that's a really good choice. I will stick with Jason Isaacs though. I think Jason Isaacs, you can't go wrong with him. There's no gamble. There's no worry. There's no hesitation. Jason Isaacs, I, I think for me is where I'm going with this, but let me know what you guys think. Do you think that the actor from the Mandalorian playing uh, Maxwell Lord could pull it off? I think that he probably could, but I'm going Jason Isaacs. Next up, we have Craven the Hunter. I, I don't know how to say this exactly. Michiel Kuisman uh, from Game of Thrones and the Age of Adeline. And Jaiman Honsu from Guardians of the Galaxy and Shazam. Now, where this is coming from, I believe, uh, Jaiman Honsu obviously is African-American. But he has, uh, there's, a, there's a whole movement right now to make um, Craven the Hunter a hunter from Africa and the idea there is that he's you know if he if he hunts in Africa why not make him African and then you could have him be in there with Wakanda or Black Panther um, which makes sense as far as comics like you could write stories you could write a film for that no doubt I'm sure and I love Jaiman Hansu but 
it takes away from the original character and the family ties that already exist in the MCU. Um, him being Russian. So I will say, I think between the two of these guys, for context sake, I would go Michiel, Michiel Huisman. Although I will say, I think Jaiman Hansu is a better actor by far. So, um, and uh, and he's, he's already straddling the line between Marvel and DC. Oh, and that being said, it's in the MCU. So we got to keep that in mind. Jaiman Hansu plays a major role in the MCU. He's played in multiple films already. So um, I'll I th actually, now I got to flip it. Now I'm going to flip it and go back to Michio because he's already in the MCU. So uh, Michio has got my vote now. <laughs> so that was a bit of a back and forth. What do you guys think? What's, what's Im important to you guys about this? I think both these actors are great and both could do the role. It's just about what you guys would want to do the role. So anyways, next up, we've got Dr. Octopus, Nikolaj Coster Waldo from Game of Thrones and Black Hawk Down. He's a really talented actor. A lot of people want him to either play Magneto or Dr. Doom. Um, I did not think I would see him on a casting for Dr. Octopus, but that's thinking outside the box, my friend. Lawrence Fishburne is the other choice for Man of Steel and from Ant-Man and the Wasp, another actor who has straddled both Marvel and DC, both the DCEU and the MCU. Being that Lawrence Fis Fishburne is already in the MCU, I'm going to go with Nikolaj Kostrowaldo. Although I will say, Dr. Octopus, um, traditionally being white, it would not bother me to change him, to change his race, because there's no there's no racial context behind his character. Behind Craven, there definitely is. But behind Dr. Octopus, there really isn't. So, um to me that one that one is perfectly fine if you wanted to choose you know like a different race or change his race um but i'm gonna go with nicolaj costrualdo because lawrence fishburne is already in the mcu so next we have rhino dominic purcell from the flash and prison break and pablo streber from orange is the new black and american gods both of these guys would be my ideal choice is like if you could if you could custom build an actor to play the role of rhino as closely as you could to the um to comic book accuracy and you wanted to take the personality and and just turn it up to 10 for perfection for rhino you'd get dominic purcell but if you went physicality pablo shriever is closer to that and probably like an eight or a nine on that side i mean obviously not nearly as thick as uh, as Rhino is comic book speaking, but he's pretty close. I mean, he's a big, big guy. Um, and I think that you could fit a couple of horns on that forehead. <laughs> so Pablo Schreiber, I think I, I normally would be choosing Dominic on this one, but I like Pablo. I'm going to go with Pablo on this one. So Pablo Schreiber it is. Next up, the lizard. We've got Rami Malek from Need for Speed and Mr. Robot. And we also have Giancarlo Esposito from Breaking Bad and Once Upon a Time. Now, between the two of these, I know everyone seems to really, really like Rami Malek. I think he's good, but I do not think he's a better actor than Giancarlo Esposito. Um, to me, I'm going Giancarlo Esposito all the way on this one. Plus, not to mention, you if you're going to have someone that's the professor of Peter Parker, he should be considerably older. Now, you could make Rami look older, but Giancarlo is older, and he was already where you would want him to be uh, in life as an actor. So that's that's more ideal to me. So that's what I'm gonna do there. Next up, we've got um, Electro. We've got Anthony Kerrigan from Gotham and Barry. This guy is just, he's all kinds of crazy. This guy's 12 levels of Savage. Um, I really liked him uh, in, in Gotham. I really like what they did with him as Victor Zaz. Um, and I think that's a very similar personality set to what you'd have to do to play Electro comic book accurate. Because Electro's crazy. And uh, Aaron Paul is also crazy. Aaron Paul, I think, is perfect for this. Both of these actors are a total win. I don't think you can go wrong with either of these guys. So for me, I'm going to I'm gonna go with... 
you know what given the choice given the choice between these two guys i'm gonna go anthony kerrigan because he's a real character guy he's like you 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 see him on screen and that's a character with aaron paul i think he's also perfect for this but i could really get lost in the role like watching anthony kerrigan go to town on on maxwell dylan so that's what i'm doing here next up let's take a look at both the teams so first team is pedro pascal Mitchell huisman Nikolaj Coster Waldo, Dominic Purcell, Rami Malik, and Anthony Kerrigan. Team two is Jason Isaacs, Jaiman Hansu, Lawrence Fishburne, Pablo Schrieber, Giancarlo Esposito, and Aaron Paul. I will say I think almost almost entirely across the board, I would I would probably be choosing team two right here. Almost entirely across the board. Um but you got two people that are already inside the MCU on team two. So that makes me want to go back with team one, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to vote on talent for this one. I really do think that team two is the, is the stronger choice. If you're ignoring the, the existing actors that are in the MCU. So I'm going to go with team two. What do you guys like from this one? I like these castings. These are really good. So let's go on to the next one and talk to me in the comments about who you like the most. Uh, and let's get into it. Next up, Vancast 247, or rather 247. Vancast 247. Welcome back to the Fancasting Summit. We have Norman Osborn. I'm gonna try to move a little bit faster through these just so that I can I can make sure that you guys uh, can have fun, but we'll get some, we'll, we'll just crush through this, all right? So first up, Carrie Elwes. I don't know how to say that. Justice League, The Flashpoint Paradox, and The Princess Bride, and Brian Cranston from ba Breaking Bad and Power Rangers 2017. Between the two of these guys, I think I'm going with Brian Cranston. I like the actor significantly more, even though I do, I, I think that Carrie Elwes is very talented. Brian Cranston is just amazing. I love him so much. And I think he has the right look for Norman Osborn. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going with Brian Cranston. Who do you guys like? Let me know down below. Next, we've got Craven the Hunter, Joe Manganiello from Justice League and Rampage, and another big dude, Clive Standin. I think he's like 6'3 or 6'4 or something, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Vikings and Taken. Both these guys pretty much look the part. Um, but between the two of these, I'm going to go with Joe Manganiello. I think Joe looks a, a, a lot more like the role. Pardon me, guys. And I really like I really like his acting style. Love to see him in something like really serious again. Um, he was he was awesome in Rampage. Love to see him do more of that kind of thing. So for me, it's all about Joe Manganiello. Next up, we've got Doc Ock. Michael Emerson from Lost and Arrow and Robert Nepper from Prison Break and Arrow. Both of these guys often play kind of a, a sinister um, guy you can't trust. And what's funny is that with Dr. Octopus, he's the guy that, that Spider-Man could trust and then can't. And then it flips and then all of a sudden he's taken over by um, by his own, his own devices, literally. And... Um, I think between the two of these guys, both of these guys are Arrow alums. Um, I think, I think for Doctor Octopus, I'd probably go with Michael Emerson, perhaps, because he can play someone that you feel like you could really connect with, and then turn on you, and that's what you see in Lost uh, for the most part. So I really like that. Let's go to the next one. Next up, we've got Rhino, Rory McCann from Hot Fuzz and Game of Thrones and Mars Crane from Hancock and Funhouse Massacre. Uh, Mars Crane is jacked outside of his mind. He is, he's beef city. Look at that guy, look at the pecs on that guy. Absolutely nuts. But uh, Rory McCann, I think has the face for Rhino. I think that I would like to see Rory McCann in there. I do like Rory as well. And I haven't seen, uh, I, I saw Hancock. I haven't seen the Funhouse Massacre. And I don't think I've seen uh, Mars Crane in anything else. But I do like Rory. So I'm going with Rory on this one. Tell me if you guys think I'm wrong. Should uh, Mars Crane get the one here? Get the roll? Or should we go with Rory? It's up to you. Uh, next, we've got The Lizard. Ethan Hawke from The Magnificent Seven and Training. And, uh, and Simon Baker from The Mentalist and The Guardian. 
Um, I'm not really familiar with Simon Baker's work. I don't think I've seen him in a whole lot. So I'm going to go with Ethan Hawke. I really do like Ethan Hawke. Um, if I if I knew Simon Baker a little bit more, I might be able to weigh in a little bit more on him because his face seems like someone that you should be trusting anyway. But with and that's something that is important to whoever's going to play Dr. Curtis Connors. Um, but I think uh, I think Ethan Hawke can bring it when he when he goes lizard mode. Uh, that's that's something that I think he would be able to shine at. So, yep. Next up, we've got Electro again. Aaron Paul. Something's telling me we're going to get a ton of Aaron Pauls here. And I personally like Aaron Paul for this role. I'm not complaining about that. I think that's a good thing. And I think it's cool to see that a lot of people are seeing that as well. Casey Affleck is an outside the box choice. Casey Affleck from Light of My Life and Ocean's 13. Interesting choice. I'm, I don't know if he could, I don't know if he uh, would feel right in it. I haven't seen him do crazy yet, but I have seen Aaron Paul do crazy. So I'm going to stick, sa- I'm going to stick with safe and go with Aaron Paul. Although Casey Affleck is very talented. Um, let me know what you guys think about that down below. Now let's take a look at the teams for FanCast 24-7. We've got, uh, Car- I'm sorry, I keep saying Carl, Carrie Elwes, Joe Manganiello, Michael Emerson, Rory McCann, Ethan Hawke, and Aaron Paul. For team two, we've got Brian Cranston, Clive Standen, Robert Nepper, Mars Crane, Simon Baker, and Casey Affleck. I think for me, this one's very easy. I'm going to go with team one on this one. Almost entirely across the board, except I will miss uh, Brian Cranston. Like all, all of these actors, except I don't really know Simon Baker, um, and I haven't seen much of Mars Crane. So uh, for me, you know, it leans pretty heavy the other way. What do you guys think about these? Which team do you like best? Talk to me in the comments. Let's do this. And also make sure to shout out to your favorite casters, fan casters, and follow them on Instagram and let them know that you guys like their work. So fan cast 3000, welcome back to the fan casting summit, my friend. Uh, let's take a look at your choices. First, we got Matthew McConaughey. And we've already, we already know what he's from, Interstellar and Dallas Buyers Club. And Jason Isaacs from Patriot and the OA. Um, man, this is a tough, tough choice. Either one of these guys would be savage in the role of Norman Osborn and in the role of the Green Goblin. I think I would personally... Ah, oh, this is hard. This is a really hard choice. I'm going to go with uh, Jason Isaacs. I'm going to go with Jason Isaacs on this one, but no doubt Matthew McConaughey is a solid choice. Who's your favorite out of the two of these guys? Can you make up your mind? Let me know in the comments. Let's go to the next one. Craven the Hunter. Scott Adkins, dude, is a savage. I love Scott, Scott Adkins. Some people don't like martial arts movies because they, you know, they often don't have good scripts. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not it's not you it's not about the story really most of the time it's like usually one of two storylines and it almost always involves someone's brother dying or getting killed by a rival uh school or something um but he's an incredible martial artist and he's a pretty darn he's getting much much better at his acting work he was in doctor strange by the way so doctor strange and boyka undisputed um but it was a minor role it was one of the disciples of Caecilius and nobody even noticed that he was there. So you could very easily get away with him being repurposed. Um, so I could I could get down with that. And Jason Momoa as f- from Aquaman and Game of Thrones. Clearly, I think that, Aqu- uh, that I keep saying Aquaman. Jason Momoa looks a great deal like Kraven the Hunter. I think he does. And uh, not in this picture though. I don't think in this picture he looks a lot like Craven the Hunter. I've seen him in, in pictures where he does. Between the two of these guys, I would like to say Scott Adkins. And I hope that they I hope that Marvel does something with Jason Momoa eventually. I hope that I hope that they don't uh I hope that they give him like Sabretooth. That would be a great role for Jason Momoa. Um But I want to hear your thoughts. What do you guys think about this casting? Should we go with the guy that or actually, you should have Jason Momoa be Namor. That would be a huge slap in the face to DC. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. I would love that so much. Not for not for slapping DC. I love DC. But anyway, 
uh, Scott Adkins is my choice. Next, let's take a look at Dr. Octopus. We have Jeffrey Wright from Westworld and Shaft, and then Jared Harris from Chernobyl and Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows. I really like both of these guys. Jeffrey Wright, I think, is a really solid choice um, to play Peter Parker's mentor, um, someone that you know, teaches him and guides him and is dealing with his own personal battles and frustrations, kind of like in the PlayStation 4 game. I think that Jeffrey Wright would be a really good choice for Dr. Octopus. That being said, though, uh, Jared Harris is a great choice. I didn't even think of Jared Harris for Dr. Octopus, but man, he would be phenomenal. He looks like Dr. Octopus. Like you could just get his hair all crazy, bowl cutty or whatever. And then... Yeah, he, lo he looks the role, he could voice the role, he could play the role, um, he plays an intelligent guy, he can play angry, he can play all of it. Uh, I really like this choice. I'm going with Jared Harris on this one. All right, next up, we've got Rhino. Again, half Thor Julius Bjornsson from Game of Thrones and Kickboxer Retaliation, and Nathan Jones from Mad Max Fury Road and Troy. Both of these are really good. Um, if I had the choice, though, I think I'm still going with half Thor Julius Bjornsson. I really think that he is a great solid choice for this. Solid being the key word here. All right, next up. Um, Lizard, we have Giancarlo Esposito from Breaking Bad and Once Upon a Time, and The Mandalorian also, and Aaron Eckhart from The Dark Knight and Olympus Has Fallen. These are both great, great choices. Uh, again, Giancarlo Esposito, probably the best uh, TV actor of all time, uh, in my opinion, and Aaron Eckhart, who I love and I think is great, great, great for this role. The Dark Knight, um, Harvey Dent, that's a really good way to kind of link the two in mental preparation for if you're going to cast for this role because um, even though Dr. Kurt Connors doesn't want to be a Two-Face or doesn't, he, he's trying to fight it, he wants a cure for it, unlike Harvey Dent. There is still a dichotomy of character that he, he has to deal with and Aaron Eckhart, Eckhart knocked it out of the park. I think Aaron Eckhart is a great choice for this. And because of that, I'm going with Aaron Eckhart. Um, Electro, Aaron Paul again, the Savage, and Wilson Bethel from Daredevil, Netflix, and Heart of Dixie. Dude, this right here is the matchup I've been waiting for. Aaron Paul, yes. Wilson Bethel, Heck to the yes. Now, I know what you're thinking. Daredevil is in the MCU. Well, technically speaking, it is not. It is downstream of the MCU. It is in the MCU, quote unquote, but nothing that happens in the Netflix verse can go back upstream to the MCU. And the that, that's because Kevin Feige and the MCU reject it. They rejected pretty much everything that was coming out of DC TV. I'm sorry, M uh, Marvel TV. And so uh, it kind of doesn't count. So whether or not they're going to allow those stories to continue inside of the MCU eventually is very, in my opinion, is very unlikely. They might continue their stories on their own, which I hope they do, but I don't think they will. Um, I'm worried that they won't because you've got a lot of the characters and actors that are in like Luke Cage, um, for instance, the guy that played Cottonmouth uh, is now cast as Blade in the MCU. So that, you know, they, they basically just said major characters that were in Luke Cage are now going to be major characters inside the MCU. It's not like a background character like Scott Adkins role in Doctor, Doctor Strange getting cast as something else, or perhaps Richard Armitage from Captain America, the first Avenger being one of the Hydra agents getting cast as like, I don't know, Wolverine or something, which has not happened by the way, I'm not saying it did. Um, that's, that would be a small thing coming into a bigger role. You're taking a big role from the Netflix and bringing it into a big role uh, in Marvel. That means you don't care about the Netflix verse. So I think Wilson Bethel, Bethel is free to go and I think he should definitely be Electro. So that was a lot to say, but yeah, Wilson Bethel. Next up, sorry. Sorry for yell, talking about all that. This is the fan casting summit, not the newsreel. So Yes, team one for FanCast 3000. By the way, I love these, these castings. Matthew McConaughey, Scott Adkins, Jeffrey Wright, Half Thor Bjornsson, uh, John Carlo Esposito, and Aaron Paul. Team two, though, is Jason Isaacs, Jason Momoa, 
Jared Harris, Nathan Jones, Aaron Eckhart, and Wilson Bethel. Guys, I think this is going to come as a surprise to you, but I'm going with team two. Team one looks absolutely phenomenal from start to finish. Nothing wrong with it, but I was, I'm very impressed by your choice for Jared, Har Jared Harris. Um, I love Aaron Eckhart. He's actually one of my choices. Wilson Bethel is one of my choices and Jason Isaacs is one of my choices. So for the most part, I mean, I'm, you know, I really like team two. What do you guys think about this? Which team do you prefer? I like team two. Tell me who yours is down below in the comments. Next up, Jack's Fancast. Welcome back to the Fancasting Summit, my friend. All right, so we have Matthew McConaughey for Green Goblin and Jason Isaacs. Between the two of these, I am gonna go with Jason Isaacs, but both are great. Let me know who you like down below. Craven the Hunter, Joe Mangan. Oh, this is good. Joe Manganiello and Manu Bennett. Both of these guys have played Deathstroke. Uh, Manu Bennett played Deathstroke in the CW verse on Arrow, and Joe Manganiello played Deathstroke in Justice League, uh, the movie, in the in the after credits. And although Manu Bennett really got the chance to explore the character, play the character, and uh, Joe Manganiello, I feel, got kind of robbed. Uh, by the situations of the turning of the of the leadership at Warner Bros. I would love to see both of these guys in the MCU. Both of them specifically as Kraven. But I think for this one, I got to go with Manu Bennett. I think Manu Bennett is the guy to go with here. It, I love Joe, dude. Joe is the man. I freaking love Joe Manganiello. But Manu Bennett, I think, is your guy. So I'm going with Manu Bennett here. All right, next up for Doc Ock, we've got Brian Cranston from Breaking Bad and Power Rangers 2017 and Jeffrey Wright from Westworld and Shaft. This is good. This is a really good matchup. Um, I got to say, I do think Brian Cranston can do this role and he can do it well. But I'm going to give this one to Jeffrey Wright for two reasons. One, he's also, if, if not as good, maybe a little bit better uh, than Brian Cranston for this role. Uh, even on looks, I gotta say, I think he's closer. But I'll say, Brian Cranston, I specifically want him for Norman Osborn if he if he can do that. So um, if I have to have Brian Cranston as something, it's gonna be Norman, uh, not Otto. And uh, Jeffrey Wright's gonna take this one. So next up, we've got Rhino, Half Thor, Julius Bjornsson, and Dave Bautista from Guardians of the Galaxy and Kickboxer Vengeance. Now, one of these two dudes is already in the MCU. So, kind of makes this pretty easy. Now, I won't I, I won't lie. I would have chosen Half Thor over Dave Batista anyway. But Dave's a good choice, but he's taken MCU uh, in a major role uh, in several movies. And Half Thor Julius Bjornsson is not. He's available. So, I'm going with the big guy. And next, we've got the Lizard, Giancarlo Esposito from Breaking Bad and Once Upon a Time, and Aaron Eckhart. I think we already had this matchup. I love this matchup. I love both these guys, but I'm going Aaron Eckhart for this one. All right. Oh, this is cool. So for Electro, now this is a good one. James McAvoy, one of the best film actors alive. Um, he's incredibly diverse. He can literally do anything. Um, and he looks the part. That's another thing. So between the two of these guys, who, by the way, they do look fairly similar, um, not identical or anything like that, but, you know, they can both clearly try out for the same role, visually speaking. I think I'm going to give this one to Aaron Paul still. Um, I really do want Aaron Paul to get this role, um, even though I think Aaron, James McAvoy would do an, an awesome job. So... Let's take a look at the teams. First up, Matthew McConaughey, Joe Manganiello, Brian Cranston, Hafler, Julius Bjornsson, Giancarlo Esposito, and James McAvoy. Team two is Jason Isaacs, Manu Bennett, Jeffrey Wright, Dave Bautista, Aaron Eckhart, and Aaron Paul. Between the two of these, I'm going with team two. Let me know what you guys like down below in the comments. Great castings. Let's move on. Next, we've got Correct Rankings Fan Cast. Welcome back, my friend, to the Fan Casting Summit. All right, let's take a look. Green Goblin, we got Michael C. Hall from Dexter and The Crown, and Toby Stevens from Black Sails and Lost in Space. This is a tough one, man. Um, between the two of these, I think I would like to go with, uh, I think I'm gonna go with Michael C. Hall. Yeah, because um, you need to have someone that, 
uh, has an element of likability and is also sinister. And I feel like Michael C. Hall has a little bit more of a grasp on that likability aspect. Um, even though he can also be, he is incredibly sinister. So I'm going to go with Michael C. Hall in this one. For Craven the Hunter, Scott Adkins and Manu Bennett. I love Scott for this one, but I'm going to give this one to Manu Bennett. Um, you just cannot get around how much he looks like the role. It's uncanny. And he knows how to play someone that tracks people down and hunts them. Like, look at his entire career on Arrow. Um, yeah, so I'm doing that. Uh, next for Dr. Octopus, Paul Giamatti. Oh, dude, this is crazy. Paul Giamatti from Amazing Spider-Man 2 and Big Fat Liar, who is brilliant for this role. But then you've got Mark Hamill for the from The Flash and The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. Um, he plays one of the Skeksis. And so, and obviously Star Wars. I'm, I'm not ignorant of the fact that he plays in Star Wars. But uh, I am definitely going to go with Mark Hamill on this one. Mark Hamill, uh, if you shave his beard, will look almost exactly like dr octopus in a, in a comic book uh sense and i think he would just he would crush the role of dr octopus in the best way i would love to have him in the mcu please and thank you yes uh next up rhino ray stevenson from thor and uh punisher Warzone. i believe ray stevenson played uh the one of the warriors three volstag i believe it is um the big guy with the red beard and red hair um and then also Dominic Purcell from The Flash and Prison Break. Between the two of these guys, um, Ray Stevenson is already in the MCU and he was in a major role. Even if he wasn't though, I think I'd still pick Dominic Purcell. I think Dominic is the right one for this role. So I'm gonna go with him. Uh, next up we've got uh, Dr. Kurt Connors, the lizard, Joel Egerton from Brighton Warrior and Michael Shannon from Man of Steel and Pearl Harbor. Uh, between the two of these guys, I think the more like the more likable, approachable um, guy I would believe Peter would have a really solid tight relationship with would probably be Joel Egerton. But I think we would get a very savage performance from Michael Sa um, Michael Savage, uh, Michael Shannon um, from Man of Steel and Pearl Harbor. So I'm going to go with Michael Shannon on this one. And we have Electro. Aaron Paul and Anthony Kerrigan. I think we had this matchup already. Between the two of these guys, I might go with Anthony Kerrigan. I really like him for this role. And of course, I love Aaron Paul. Both are a win in my book, but I want to hear from you. What, Which one do you like the most for this role? All right, let's look at the teams. Now, team one, Michael C. Hall, Scott Adkins, Paul Giamatti, Ray Stevenson, Joel Egerton, and Aaron Paul. Team two, Toby Stevens, Manu Bennett, Mark Hamill, Dominic Purcell, Michael Shannon, and Anthony Kerrigan. Between the two of these teams, I am going with Team 2. I really like Team 2. Uh, I would probably have just switched Toby Stevens for Michael C. Hall. And I think that might be the only switch I would make. But I don't think I would need to. Toby Stevens is good. And uh, if you shave his facial hair off, he'll probably look a great, great deal like... Norman Osborn anyway. So yeah, that works for me. I'm going with team two. All right, let's go to just another fan cast account or Jaffa. Welcome back, my friend to the fan casting summit. It's great to have you back. Always some of the most unique fan castings I've ever seen from just another fan cast account. I love this guy. Can't wait to see what he's got cooking up for us here. First up for Norman Osborn, we got John Cho, Star Trek, and searching. Very interesting take going with an Asian guy for Norm MacDonald. <laughs> Norm MacDonald. Uh, uh, that's a comedian, isn't it? Norm MacDonald. Norm, Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin. Um, I do think that... I think that that could work. I think that that could work really well, actually. Um, but Matthew Modine from Stranger Things and The Dark Knight Rises, I think, might be the better choice. Um... It'd be very interesting going into Norman Osborn um, with with Matthew Modine. He does have a little bit of an older look, someone that might be old enough to probably get into politics like Norman Osborn intends to eventually. I think Matthew Modine might be the choice here, but I love John Cho. 
So that's a very interesting choice. I'm gonna go with, uh, but I'm, I'm gonna go with Matthew Modine. We have Craven the Hunter, Mustafa Shakur uh, from from Luke Cage and from Brawl in Cell Block 99, and Stefan Kapicic from Deadpool 2 and Miracle. Now, uh, I mentioned this before. Like, there are people that want to have um, Craven the Hunter be a hunter from Africa. But that does mess up his backstory and it messes with his relationship with Chameleon, who is already in the MCU um, as a Russian. So for uh, a number of characteristic and story reasons and looks, I'm going to go with Stefan Kapicic. Also, he's really good at playing Russian, as we know from him playing Colossus in Deadpool 2. So it would be pretty cool to see him in live action, though, because he does look a lot like Kraven. But... Uh, Mustafa Shakir needs to get inside the MCU in one way or another because I mean he was in Luke Cage and he was fantastic he's a great actor so I want to see him there but I think we just got to find we got to find the right role for him and I, I'm not sure that Craven the Hunter is that one for him so let's keep looking next one we've got Dr. Octopus Josh Cigar from Arrow and Chicago PD I like this guy uh, he was really fun on Arrow I really liked his character um, but then you've got Leonardo DiCaprio from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and The Revenant. Now, I don't know if he would ever take the role, but I would go 100% Leonardo DiCaprio on this one if he would ever agree to do it. I think he'd be great. Um, yeah, 100% Leo DiCaprio. That's my vote. And uh, for this one, we've got Rhino, David Ramsey, heck yes, uh, from Arrow and Dexter. And Rory McCann from Game of Thrones and Hot Fuzz. Now, um, with Rhino, there really isn't a lot of... Um, there isn't any kind of like cultural or backstory that would tie Rhino to like a, a certain race or anything. I guess you could just say the, the name O'Hearn is Irish. But that could come from, you know, your, your mother's side, your grandmother's... Or your father's side your grandfather's side great grandfather's side doesn't have to be anything specific like that so um i don't think that matters uh for this character particularly but rory mccann from game of thrones and hot fuzz i think is a really great choice for this so to me this one's almost a coin toss because i really love david ramsey um and it doesn't matter contextually so i don't know you know what I'm going to go with David Ramsey. I would like to see him play the Rhino. That would be really cool. Get him get him some of that uh, MCU action would be pretty sweet. So I'm going to go there. But basically, either one for me is, is good. What do you guys like? Let me know down below. Uh, and heck yes, Team Diggle. All right. Uh, next, we've got Lizard. Lenny James from The Walking Dead and Columbiana. And Oscar Isaac from The Force Awakens and X-Men Apocalypse. I really love Oscar Isaac. I think he's great. I love pretty much everything he's in. Um, and, uh, Lenny James, I've only seen, uh, in Colombiana and he did a good job. I haven't watched the walking dead. If that, so that's, you know, <laughs> cats out of the bag. I don't, I haven't watched it. Uh, I've seen a couple of episodes, but, uh, not in order. And, um, uh, yes. So I think between the two of these guys, I think I would go with Lenny James actually, because I think he's closer to the right age for, for Dr. Connors and I think Oscar Isaac to me does not seem like a, a doctor he doesn't seem like the lizard to me even though I think he's great and he can do a great number of things I think there's going to be other roles for Oscar Isaac so I'm going to go with Lenny James on this one um oh whoa this is a, this is a crazy uh crazy casting here Elect Electro you got Joe Manganiello from Spider-Man and Rampage and uh, Pedro Pascal from Game of Thrones and The Mandalorian. I love both of these actors. I have never once considered either of these guys for Electro. But if I must choose, I would say this. If I'm going to go on personality specifically, I would pick Joe Manganiello all day long. If I was going to go on looks, physique, uh, physical on-camera appearance for the role of Electro, I would go Pedro Pascal all day long. So I think both of these guys have the opposite thing that you would need both of. Um, and I'm sure Pedro Pascal could pull some of the personality of his, out of his pocket. Joe Manganiello 
I mean, you can't you can't change his physicality. You make you basically have a gigantic Electro. Um, it'd be pretty hard to hide that. I would. I'm thinking I'm gonna go with Pedro Pascal for this one. Um, even though Joe Manganiello, dude, he's like my hero. I love that guy. So let's take a look at the teams. First up, we've got John Cho, Mustafa Shakir, Josh Sagara, David Ramsey, Lenny James, and Joe Manganiello. Dude, these. I don't think anyone in the rest of this cast casting uh, summit has picked uh, anyone for these roles that you picked. Like, you might. We might have seen. We've seen Joe Manganiello before, but not for Electro. You know. So that's like. That's what I mean. Is like these are incredibly unique. Also, team two. Matthew Modine, Stefan Kapicic, Leonardo DiCaprio, Rory McCann, Oscar Isaac, and Pedro Pascal. Between the two of these teams, I like team two. And I like team two because I think Stefan Kapicic is perfect for Craven. I think Leonardo DiCaprio, if you could ever get him to agree to do a comic book movie, would be amazing as Dr. Octopus. Uh, Matthew Modine, I think, is the better choice for Green Goblin. It's a coin toss for me for Rhino. Um, Lizard, I do like Lenny James better. But for Electro, it's Pedro. So the majority goes to Team 2, and that's how I feel. What do you guys think about Jaffa's castings for uh, Team 1 and Team 2? Let me know which is your favorite. And thank you so much for another unique casting, my friend. With World of Fancasts, welcome back to the Fancasting Summit. I'm going to try to jet a little quicker through these. I know I talk and I like to commentate about these things, but I want to make sure that everybody gets um, gets a chance to get through the, to the end for those who are watching. Ready? Let's go. Green Goblin, Ethan Hawke from Training Day and Magnificent Seven, and Giancarlo Esposito from Breaking Bad and Once Upon a Time. Between the two of these guys, I prefer... I think I prefer Ethan Hawke. For Green Goblin. Even though Giancarlo is an incredible actor, I think Ethan Hawke has the right... He's got the right look. I think he's got the right... I think even the face shape, really, uh, for the Green Goblin. I think that would work really nicely with the Green Goblin, like, uh, like makeup and some, you know... It wouldn't be hard to turn him into the Green Goblin very much. So I think that's where I'm going with that one. Next, we got Craven the Hunter, Pedro Pascal, and Joel Egerton. This is a good one. Um, between the two of these guys, I think uh, Joel Egerton looks a little bit too... Um, he looks too British to me. I'm going to go with Pedro Pascal because he could pass as Russian. He could he could definitely pass as Craven the Hunter. Um, you just got to make sure he gets that full mustache all the way down. Uh, and then and then dye it all black. That's what you got to do for him. I'm going Pedro Pascal so that we can let that bounty hunter do some hunting. This is the way. Next, we've got for Dr. Octopus, World of Fancasts, Steve Carell from The Office and Foxcatcher, and Ewan McGregor from Star Wars Revenge of the Sith and Black Hawk Down. Both are actors I absolutely adore with my whole heart. Um, Ewan McGregor is one of my favorites of all time. I love this guy. But... I think if you're going to go Dr. Octopus, even though I think his head shape's a little bit different than what the comic version is, I'm going to say Steve Carell. He does look a little bit closer to the PlayStation 4 game. Um, and I think he could play that role really nicely. So I'm going to go with Steve Carell. Um, with Rhino, yes, we're back. Rory McCann, Game of Thrones and Hot Fuzz, and Christopher Hivju from Game of Thrones and The Fate of the Furious. Between the two of these guys, I'm gonna go with Rory McCann. I think Rory is the better choice um, for Rhino. I, I really like Rory, and I haven't seen a whole lot with Christopher, so I'm gonna go with Rory. Simon Pegg from Star Trek and Shaun of the Dead, and BD Wong from Gotham and Fallen Kingdom. Uh, that's Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Between the two of these guys, for Dr. Curtis Connors, either of them could work for sure. But I think I'm gonna go with Simon Pegg because I haven't seen B.D. Wong do anything where he had a soft side to him. He, he plays a, kind of a cold, a little more calloused scientist a lot of the time, which, you know, I think could help him dive more into the lizard part of it, um, just being a little bit more uh, cold and vicious. But Simon Pegg can connect 
uh, emotionally with people. And I think that's where you need your actor to be for Dr. Curtis Connors. So I'm going with Simon Pegg. Now, Electro. We've got Alfie Allen from Game of Thrones and John Wick and Lakeith Stanfield from Atlanta and Get Out. Um, I actually have not seen uh, Maxwell Dillon um, in anything because I have not seen John Wick and I have not watched Game of Thrones. I know I'm outing myself on a couple of things this uh, uh, this summit, but it's all good, you know. Uh, I'll be straight with you guys. I'll always shoot straight with you. Um, I have not seen Alfie Allen. Based on looks, I'd probably go Alfie, but I don't want to judge based purely on looks. So, that being said, Lakey Stanfield is a really good actor, and I think uh, I don't think he'd have a problem playing Electro. He's just got to dive into that crazy, and you got it. So I'm going Lakey. All right, let's take a look at the teams. First, Ethan Hawke, Pedro Pascal, Steve Carell, Rory McCann, Simon Pegg, and Alfie Allen. Next after that, we've got Team 2, Giancarlo Esposito, Joel Egerton, uh, Ewan McGregor, Christopher Hivju, B.D. Wong, and Lake Keith Stanfield. Now, between the two of these teams, for me, it's pretty cut and dry. I like Team 1 the best out of these two teams. Um, let me know which one you guys like the best and who you'd like to see play these roles down in the comments below. Next up, we got the new fancaster. The new one. Welcome back. Actually, welcome to the Fancasting Summit. I think this might be your first Fancasting Summit. So welcome aboard. Uh, all right. First up, we've got Michael Fassbender from 12 Years a Slave and X-Men Days of Future Past for the Green Goblin. And we also have Dash Mihawk from Punisher Warzone and I Am Legend. Um, I have seen I Am Legend. I have not seen Punisher Warzone. Dash Mihawk, uh, what I've seen of him, he's pretty good. <laughs> Dude, guys, I'm so... I've been staying up kind of late on the weekend. Um, and that's going to get worse because i got a kid on the way too. Green Goblin, I'm definitely going Michael Fassbender. He's perfect for this role. If he doesn't get to play either Magneto, again, in the MCU, as opposed to the Bryan Singer universe, if they don't carry him over, or if they don't choose to put him as Doctor Doom, they better put him as Green Goblin. He is so perfect for this role. I love him for this. To me, it's no contest. Green, a Green Goblin, Michael Fassbender, all day. Next up, Craven the Hunter. We got uh, Pablo Schreiber from American Gods and Orange is the New Black, and Mustafa Shakur, Brawl in Subblock 99, and Luke Cage. I really like these guys. Uh, I like both of these guys. I think the better actor between the two of them is Mustafa, but I think for the role of Craven specifically, I would go Pablo Schreiber. Um, he's also going to be in the upcoming Halo TV series, um, which has been announced. I think that's Netflix. I can't remember which company has that. It's either Netflix or like Hulu or Amazon. Uh, but he's, uh, I think he's got the experience in this kind of role. And I would love to see him play that role. He's huge. That's a big part of it. Um, I really like Pablo Schreiber, so I'm going Pablo. Next up, we got... Dr. Octopus, Tony Goldwyn from Scandal and Divergent, and Rain Wilson from The Meg and The Office. Tony Goldwyn's good, but I don't think I don't think he's the best actor ever. Rain Wilson is also maybe not the best actor ever, but he's good. And he's pretty good. And I think he's right for this role. So Dr. Octopus would be a role that he would fit right right into because dr octopus is not supposed to be someone that is dramatically like handsome chiseled good looking which tony goldwyn kind of is um but he is supposed to be someone that is maybe a little bit unkempt has not a terrific haircut uh, and is more brain than uh than uh reason i guess He's logical, but he's not reasonable. Uh, and that's, I think, something that we've seen from Rain Wilson in The Office. So, I like Rain Wilson for this. I'm going Rain Wilson. Next, we've got Rhino, Steven Kopichik, and Half Thor, Julius Bjornsson. Given the choice between the two of these, I think the better actor is Stefan. But I'm going to go with Half Thor because I, I really don't think you need a great actor for Rhino. It's not like Sabretooth, another beefcake, but Sabretooth is actually very intelligent he's not a genius but he is a he's a 
uh, he's a killer and he's very strategic. Uh, with Rhino, he's just a tank. Like he's just a, I'm gonna run you over and murder you with with stomping on you and running you into walls and stuff. So I think Half Thor's got this in the bag. I'm going Half Thor. Um, the Lizard, Giancarlo Esposito from Breaking Bad and Once Upon a Time, and Jordan Peele from The Twilight Zone and Keanu. Now I really, I really do like Jordan Peele, but I don't think that he would be best for this role for the Lizard. Giancarlo Esposito would be. Giancarlo Esposito's got my vote here. Jordan Peele, I think, would actually make a better Dr. Octopus than he would um, the lizard. So, yeah, that's my take on that. All right. Electro, we have Anthony Kerrigan and Thomas Middleditch from G Godzilla King of the Monsters and Silicon Valley. I think Thomas Middleditch is good. I don't think he's great. And I do think Anthony Kerrigan is really good. So I'm going with Anthony Kerrigan. Plus, I think he's just got the crazy down. With Thomas, you don't really see that exact kind of crazy that we've seen from Anthony Kerrigan. So I'm going to go with Anthony. All right. Now let's take a look at the teams. Team one, Michael Fassbender, Pablo Schriever, Tony Goldwyn, Steven Kapichik, Giancarlo Esposito, and Anthony Kerrigan. Team two is Dash Mihawk, Stefan Shakir, Rain Wilson, half Thor, Julius Bjornsson, Jordan Peele, and Thomas Middleditch. Um, I really liked Rain Wilson and half Thor, but for that, for team two, those are the only two that I actually care about. So I'm going team one because as a whole, I think team one is really solid. So I'm going with team one, but really unique choices for the second team as well. I really like uh, that you include like Jordan, Jordan Peele. Um, you don't see Thomas Middleditch in a lot of fan castings, by the way. And, uh, and I've never seen Dash Mihawk before, um, and I do these summits. So, really cool choices. All right, FanCast Infinity, welcome back to the Fan Casting Summit. Let's take a look. I'm gonna take a quick drink out of my drink real quick because my throat's getting real dry. Okay. All right, so first up, we got Ka Colin Farrell from Dumbo and True Detective. Um, he's also been in Daredevil, which most people remember him as Bullseye. He plays a really um, crazy, eccentric Daredevil. I'm sorry, uh, not Daredevil, Bullseye. Um, but I think that he has grown a lot as an actor, and I think that he would be pretty good in the role of, of uh, Norman Osborn. Daniel Craig, on the other hand, I think would be really, really good as Norman Osborn. Given the choice between the two, I think I'd rather have Colin Farrell, though. I'm going with Colin Farrell for this one. Let me know if that surprises you, um, if you guys uh, prefer Daniel Craig over Colin Farrell. Next up, we've got Liev Schreiber. That's a killer casting for Kraven the Hunter. We've seen him in X-Men Origins Wolverine. He played Sabretooth before. And Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, he voices the Kingpin. So he's got a lot of comic book history in Marvel. And I think, yeah, he's a great choice for Craven the Hunter. Just grow out the facial hair the appropriate way that he should be. And I think you got your guy. And then Michael Jai White is also a really good choice for this. Now, um, I think Michael Jai White would be better suited in a different role than Craven the Hunter personally. Although, as a martial artist, you're gonna be hard pressed to find anyone better. If you want great fight scenes, really hard to find someone better than Michael Jai White. Scott, Scott uh, Adkins is probably the other person that comes to mind. Um, but I'm going to go with Leave Schreiber on this one. All right, next up. We have for Dr. Octopus, Gary Oldman. Maybe the best actor ever. <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> that guy's just amazing. Um, Gary Oldman from The Dark Knight and Darkest Hour and Jordan Peele from Keanu and Twilight Zone. Uh, I think this one... This one uh, is tough because... We're talking about Gary Oldman. We're talking about the best, arguably the best actor ever. If you can get him into a comic book role, um, especially a villain, that would be so good, so much fun. But I'm actually gonna go with Jordan Peele on this one. I think that it is important to get the right, um, the right look. And also Jordan Peele, like Jordan Peele's body and face and head shape are all right for Dr. Octopus. 
I really, even if you're going to go with a ripped Dr. Octopus, I think Jordan Peele is still your guy. I think he is right there in the pocket. And I think his acting ability fits right into what you would need for Dr. Octopus. Just someone that is, um, that can connect emotionally with you, which we've seen from basically every video, ev the beginning of every video he's ever done on, on his Comedy Central, and then not the end. But, um, but his, uh, his his range and his ability to just turn and become like sinister or evil or corrupted he can do that no doubt i've seen it many many times from him so i i feel totally confident choosing jordan peele right now even over the likes of gary oldman so yes going with jordan peele all right for rhino stephen graham from rocket man and tinker taylor soldier spy and stephen kapichik from big miracle and deadpool 2. i am going to go with stefan kapichik even though stephen graham definitely looks like he should be playing Rhino. So I'm gonna go with Stefan Kapichik. Um, for this one, Lizard, David Tennant from Jessica Jones and Doctor Who, which I think is a really good choice. Um, this is a great choice for him. And uh, Giancarlo Esposito from Breaking Bad and Once Upon a Time. I'm still gonna stick with Giancarlo on this one, but that is a good, good casting. I, I'll, bet you more, I'll bet you a lot of people are gonna disagree with me, and go with uh, David Tennant. And I don't think you're wrong for that. I think that's a good choice. So let me know who you guys like down below in the comments and let's keep moving. Next up, we've got Electro. Hey, this is a cool, cool matchup. All right, Wilson Bethel from Daredevil, Netflix, and Heart of Dixie. And Taron Egerton from Rocket Man and Kingsman. Oh, this is so, this is a good one because Taron Egerton's fantastic. I love Taron. Um, and I think he's physically, he physically looks right for this role but so does Wil Wilson Bethel and I think they're both really really good actors I think Wilson Bethel Bethel is less recognized though and I would like to see Wilson Bethel get this role so by a slim margin I'm gonna choose Wilson Bethel but this is a good one guys uh fan cast infinity bravo this is a really 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 good casting here so let's take a look at the teams next up team one Colin Farrell Lee Schreiber, Gary Oldman, Stephen Graham, David Tennant, and Wilson Bethel. Team two, Daniel Craig, Michael Jai White, Jordan Peele, Stefan Kapichik, Giancarlo Esposito, and Taron Egerton. Dang. This is basically a really, uh, this is a really good cast for both teams. I really like Jordan Peele, Giancarlo Esposito, Taron Egerton, but I'm gonna go with team one because I think across the board, the, the whole team is just ready for those roles. So uh, Colin Farrell, Liev Schreiber, Gary Oldman, Stephen Graham, David Tennant, and Wilson Bethel are my choices for this one. All right, let's go to the next one. Next up, we've got Reimagine Fancast. Welcome back to the Fancasting Summit. This guy's a veteran. Um, so let's take a look at your teams. First up, we got Matthew McConaughey from Interstellar, Dallas Buyers Club, and Christian Bale, The Dark Knight and Vice. Now, Christian Bale, I think both these guys are perfectly cut out for this role. I think that Matthew McConaughey looks the role. I think he's got a, a really unique face shape that will become a very, very accurate and, and scary Green Goblin. But so I think Christian Bale does too. I think Christian Bale can and would play a frightening Green Goblin. And a very uh, charming Norman Osborn, a deceptive Norman Osborn. Both these guys are wins. Um, holy cow. How am I supposed to decide between these? I think I'm going to go with Christian Bale um, because it would be really crazy to see a Batman actor come over and play um, a Spider-Man villain in the MCU again. And I'm talking about um, after Michael Keaton, of course. So Michael Keaton and then Christian Bale. <laughs> then maybe we can get George Clooney in there to play someone else too. So, uh, all right. So next, uh, well, let's go Craven the Hunter, Gustav Skarsgård from Vikings and Westworld, and Jeffrey Dean Morgan from The Walking Dead and Supernatural. I really do like Gustav Skarsgård. I think he's awesome. But for the role of Craven, I am going to go with Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I love Supernatural. And uh, I've only seen a couple episodes from The Walking Dead, but he definitely is really, really, really good at playing a hunter uh, in a number of different ways of definition. So I'm going to go with Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I think he's great. Let's go with the Winchester. All right, 
Doc Ock. Let's talk. Brian Cranston from Power Rangers 2017 and Breaking Bad. And David Morrissey from The Walking Dead and Britannia. Both of these guys, I feel, would be good. But to me, Brian Cranston is the win here. Um, David Morrissey is an amazing actor, but it's it's uh, not the same. I think I think for me, David Morrissey feels kind of like a little bit more of an everyman, like a, a guy that could play pretty much everything here, there, whatever. But Brian Cranston does feel like someone that could play Dr. Octopus really, really well. So I'm going with Doc Ock as Brian Cranston. Next, Rhino. We've got Half Thor, Julius Bjornsson. And Stefan Kapichik, I am going to choose Half Thor, Julius Bjornsson, yet again. Uh, just because you can't, you can't top that guy, dude. Like, you cannot beat that guy. And he is, he's literally a human tank. All right, so next up, we got the Lizard, Tim Robbins from Green Lantern and the Shawshank Redemption, and Giancarlo Esposito from Breaking Bad and Once Upon a Time. Between the two of these guys, Tim Robbins is really good, but... John Carlo feels to me more like a Dr. Curtis Connors. I, I personally feel like I would like to see John Carlo play that role. So to me, I'm going John Carlo. All right, Electro. This one's, this is savage. We got Ben Foster from Hell or High Water and X-Men Last Stand. He played Archangel um, in X-Men Last Stand. Uh, such an underrated actor. Ben Foster is super, super legit. He could definitely morph his way into this role. But it also begs the question, how old do you want Electro to be? How old is Maxwell Dillon in the MCU? Um, Alexander Ludwig, I think, is probably a little bit closer in age to where I think I would want Electro. Uh, in his 30s, not his 40s. For me... Both these guys are A-list talents. Um, maybe not recognized by everybody as A-list, but I think they're A-list. Alexander Ludwig from the Hungry Games and Vikings is my choice. But Ben Foster is nothing to sneeze at. He's a, an incredible actor. So let's take a look at your teams. Dude, these are savage, by the way. Matthew McConaughey, Gustav Skarsgård, Brian Cranston, Half Thor Julius Bjornsson, Tim Robbins, and Ben Foster. Killer, killer lineup. Next up for the second team, Christian Bale, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, David Morrissey, Stefan Kapichik, John Carlo Esposito, Alexander Ludwig. Holy cow. How am I supposed to choose between this, man? This is ridiculous. Okay, you know what? No, I, I'm going to choose... I'm going to choose team two. Team two is where I'm going with this one. I, I got to go with Christian Bale, Jeffrey Dean Morgan... Um, John Carlos Esposito, Alexander Ludwig, uh, those, those to me are locks. And so I've got to stick with that. So for me, it's team two, but let me know what you guys think about reimagined fan casts, castings of, uh, the, the Spidey rogues, dude. This is a really good lineup on both sides. Win, win, win. Fan cast power. Welcome back to the fan casting summit. It's great to have you, man. Uh, Fancast Power says Ben Mandelson for Green Goblin from Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and Captain Marvel. And Leonardo DiCaprio, The Wolf of Wall Street, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Now, if you had asked me about Ben Mendelssohn being Green Goblin before Captain Marvel came out, I would have said absolutely Ben Mendelssohn all day long. Yes, please, all day. Always. Ben Mendelsohn is amazing. He makes everything he's in better. He's among an incredible lineup of positive things to say. I think he's one of the best things to say about Star Wars Rogue One, uh, which I love. And he is, in my opinion, the best part of Captain Marvel. Um, I love Ben Mendelsohn, but he's in the MCU. So that being said, Leonardo DiCaprio is an A-list actor fantastic actor great talent can definitely play someone that loses his cool that puts on a face in front of people uh leo is an excellent choice although i don't think he looks like norman osborne particularly um 
I think he could play the role. So I'm going to go with Leo DiCaprio. All right. Fancast Power says, for Craven the Hunter, Pedro Pascal from The Mandalorian and Triple Frontier or Manu Bennett from The Shannara Chronicles and Arrow. I like both these guys. I love Mando. But Manu Bennett is the guy for sure. I, I there, There's no way to get around it. I think he clearly deserves the role. He looks the part. He's played parts that are identical. Um, yeah, there, I think there's just no way to get around it. You got to go with Mono in this one. Um, all right, Dr. Octopus, Brian Cranston versus Giancarlo Esposito. Between the two of these, I'm going Brian Cranston because I do think that Giancarlo deserves to be in the Spidey Rogues, but I feel he deserves to be the lizard. Um, he always plays a bad guy, so it would be nice if the bad guy he plays is actually more good than bad um meaning that you know he actually gets to play dr curtis connors instead of dr otto octavius who gets corrupted and stays corrupted but the lizard has a jekyll and hyde thing where he comes back and back and forth from the bad to the good where dr octopus is basically lost okay um so fan cast power says rhino dominic purcell versus dave batista dave batista is in the mcu so that kind of makes this choice a little bit easy. And I, I would have chosen Dominic Purcell either way, but Dave would be a good choice. I just think Dominic Purcell is much better and he's not in the MCU already. So I'm going Dominic. Now, Lizard, we're talking Jason Isaacs. Dang, dude, this is a good, Jason Isaacs is fantastic, but I, I, I do like him more specifically for Norman Osborn and Aiden Gillen would be savage as the Lizard. I love Aiden. Um, and I don't know if you guys see this uh, this name of the, the movie right here, Lorna Dune. It's a really old film, but it's probably Aiden Gillen's best work. You've got to see Aiden Gillen play an evil tool bench in this in this movie. He is just, he's evil in that movie. So I'm, I'm going Aiden Gillen for this one. Um, specifically to watch him transition from Dr. Curtis Connors into the lizard for that moment specifically i want to see him go to town all right next up electro we've got jason clark from terminator genesis and dawn of the planet of the apes and ben foster from hell or high water and x-men the last stand between the two of these guys for electro i'm gonna go with ben foster jason clark is good but ben foster i think will, would be able to pull this one off a little bit better um so yeah, I'm going with Ben Foster. And let's take a look at the team. So FanCast Power says, Ben Mendelsohn for team one, Pedro Pascal, uh, Brian Cranston, Dominic Purcell, Jason Isaacs, and Jason Clark. And for team two, we have Leonardo DiCaprio, Manu Bennett, Giancarlo Esposito, Dave Batista, Aiden Gillen, and Ben Foster. Whew. Between the two of these, I'm going with team two. I, I, I think... I can't pass up Manu Bennett. I can't pass up Aiden Gillen or Ben Foster in these specific roles. And the other members of that cast, I can totally get down with. So I'm going to go with team two. Let me know what you guys think down below. Because this one could go either way. I mean, the cast is killer on both sides. Um, let's keep moving. Next up, we've got Fan Cast Icon. Fan Cast Icon, welcome back to the Fan Casting Summit. We have Green Goblin, Matthew McConaughey, and David Morrissey. Between the two of these guys, I'm going to go with Matthew McConaughey. I feel like he's a better actor. I think he's, he's going to look the part better as the Goblin. Um, and I think, yeah, he's just uh, my personal choice for this one. Let me know what you guys think down below. For the for the role of Craven the Hunter, this is cool. Manu Bennett from, from Arrow and the Shannara Chronicles. And Aldous Hodge from Underground and Leverage. I have not seen Aldous Hodge um in a lot of things but i have seen manu bennett in plenty i love manu bennett i think he's a great actor but he's also undeniably perfect for this role visually in his physique his his uh stunt training his fight choreography training pretty much every on every level he's perfect for this role it's almost impossible to deny that i'm gonna go with manu bennett all right, for Dr. Octopus, we've got Mark Hamill from Nightfall and Return of the Jedi and Oliver Platt from X-Men First Class and Chicago Med. Oliver Platt would do 
really well as Dr. Octopus, but Mark Hamill would do better. So I'm going with Mark Hamill. Um, Rhino, we got Half Thor, Julius Bjornsson, Game of Thrones and Kickboxer Retaliation, and Dominic Purcell, Prison Break, and DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Between the two of these guys, I'm going with Half Thor, Julius Bjornsson. I think that's the better call. Um, you get literally two and a half times the men out of this deal for choosing Half Thor. And you don't need a lot of lines from Rhino. You really don't. I mean, people always say, like, you don't just want some big guy, you want someone that can act. There are roles out there where you don't need someone that can act. That's a fact. And um, I'm, I'm going to go with, for this specific role for Rhino, I wouldn't do this kind of thing just for uh, for Sabretooth. Um, I picked a lot of big guys for my Sabretooth castings, but it's different. Uh, you got to have a different kind of actor. And for Half Thor, I think he could fit the bill of Rhino easily. No problem. So I'm going with Half Thor. Next, the Lizard. Patrick Wilson from Aquaman and Watchmen. I love that guy. And Sean Murray, NCIS and When Black Birds Fly. This guy looks like, he looks like the cousin of Sheldon from uh, The Big Bang Theory. <laughs> if Sheldon has, has had a cousin. So I'm going to go, but between the two of these guys, I like Patrick Wilson far better. I'm going to go with Patrick Wilson. And I do think that he's better for the role all around. Um, I think he's a little older than the other guy, um, which is good. That's better. And... Uh, yeah, I think, I think he'd just be better for the role, in my opinion. So I'm going to go with him. All right, next, Electro. We've got Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad Need for Speed and Cam Gigandet. I don't know how to say that. Gigantet? Gigandet? I don't know. Uh, from Never Back Down in the OC. Um, for, these, for this role, I'm going to go with Aaron Paul. Um, he's just perfect for the role. Like, I can't... There, there's like it's really hard to pick someone over Aaron Paul for this role But let's take a look at the teams. So let's let's look at the breakdown for the teams Ma Matthew McConaughey for team one Manu Bennett Mark Hamill half Thor Bjornsson Patrick Wilson and Aaron Paul Team two is David Morrissey Aldous Hodge Oliver Platt Dominic Purcell Sean Murray and Cam Ugandet. Um Between the two of these I'm gonna go with team one 100% across the board. Every single person on the top row, I like more than the person on the bottom for that role. So I'm definitely going to go with team one. To me, this one's kind of easy to pick, but I do like these, I do like these uh, castings, especially Oliver Platt. I like that he was included in the Dr. Octopus conversation. All right, next up, we've got Ultimate Fan Cast. Welcome back to the Fan Casting Summit. We have Jason Isaacs and Oscar Isaac for Norman Osborn. That's really cool getting uh, Os Oscar Isaac in there. I think he's a little young, maybe. Uh, maybe he's just deceitfully young. Maybe maybe he just looks younger than he is, um, and I'm and I'm perhaps not uh, aware of his true age. But I would go with Jason Isaac for this on age, on looks, and on acting ability. I think he's just better prepared for a villain role. Um, so I'm gonna go with Jason Isaacs. Save Oscar Isaac for a different role. Um, then we also have Jeff uh, for Craven the Hunter, Jeffrey Dean Morgan from Supernatural and The Walking Dead, and Jason Momoa from Aquaman and Game of Thrones. Wow, this is a good one. Uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan would be great if you're gonna go with an older Craven the Hunter, but you don't have to do that. And Jason Momoa would be phenomenal in the role of Craven. I would like to see Jason Momoa get it. So I'm choosing Jason. Next up, we've got, oh dude, this is a crazy good matchup. Mark Hamill from Nightfall and Return of the Jedi and Rain Wilson from The Meg and The Office. Rain Wilson is one of my top two picks for the role of Dr. Octopus, but Mark Hamill is also brilliant. Brilliant choice. Both of them have kind of the general look you would want to go for. Um, course yeah you'd have to shave their their beards off um i think i'm gonna go with rain wilson on this one but it's it's a coin toss it's basically a coin toss for this one both guys could do this job and i would love to see both of them in it all right next up we've got for rhino hey we got denzel washington my man the equalizer and the book of eli and kevin james from king of queens and here comes the boom so for this one, I think the better actor, no one's going to dispute, is Denzel Washington. 
for sure the better actor but you don't need a lot uh and i think with the right director coaching and guiding kevin james to just like hey you know your role is not a humorous one your role literally hates humor um i think he would be better for it because he's got kind of more of that more of the mass more of the bulk if you guys saw him in here comes the boom he actually lost quite a bit of weight and actually got into a pretty good shape like he got into like a like a not not like super cut but he was pretty built and so i think he would be a good choice not the biggest guy in the world but denzel's not huge either so if i had to choose between the two of them i might go kevin james because i'm interested to see where it's going denzel i would rather you save denzel for a really really good role you know what i mean like rhino is a good role for certain types of people denzel if you put him in that role, you've wasted the opportunity to put Denzel in any other MCU role that could be far better. So I'm going to say put Denzel in your pocket, save him for later in the MCU, and Kevin James should definitely get this one. Um, the Lizard, Michael Shannon versus Aaron Eckhart. Love Michael Shannon, but I'm going to make this easy for you. I really like Aaron Eckhart. I'm going with Aaron Eckhart. Uh, next, we've got Electro, Ralph Fiennes versus ben foster both of these guys could do it but i think ralph fines is a little old for this role as norman osborne you could convince me that he should be ralph fines but not for electro i think electro should be a little bit younger i'm going with ben foster because i do think he's really good for the role and let's take a look at the teams as if this couldn't get any harder we have jason isaacs jeffrey d Mor Jean morgan uh, Mark Hamill, Denzel Washington, Michael Shannon, and Ralph Fiennes. Team two, Oscar Isaac, Jason Momoa, Rain Wilson, Kevin James, Aaron Eckhart, and Ben Foster. For this one, I'm going with team two. And that may come as a surprise to you guys. There's a wicked lineup of talent on the top row. Clearly a great cast uh, regardless. But I think team two might work better for those specific roles. Like when you when you focus on specifically that role, I think Jason Momoa would be better as Craven. Rain Wilson would be better as Octopus. Um, I think Aaron Eckhart would be better as the Lizard. Ben Foster would be better as Electro. Um, I think Jason Isaacs would be better for than Oscar Isaac at Green Goblin. And I think Denzel might be better as Rhino. But... I'd prefer to see him in a in a better role than that. So I'm going with team two. Let me know what you guys have to say down below. Next up, we got Fan Casting 10. Welcome to the Fan Casting Summit again. Because you're a veteran. Alright, so we've got Colin Farrell from Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them and Daredevil. And we also have Brian Cranston from The Upside and Breaking Bad. This is a really good matchup. Um, but between the two of these, I think I'm going to go with Brian Cranston on this one because I feel like he would pro actually, you know what? Hang on, hang on. I just, I just realized that, um, simple aesthetics really grab my attention, but Colin Farrell's hairline does sort of give itself that widow's peak that the green goblin has. Uh, Brian Cranston, I think, would be really killer as Norman Osborn. But I think Colin Farrell might do better as the Green Goblin. Tough to say, but I think I would prefer that Norman Osborn aspect be really solid. So I'm going with Brian Cranston. All right, next up, we got Manu Bennett versus Gerard Butler for Craven the Hunter. Gerard is from 300 and How to Train Your Dragon. Between the two of these guys... I am still gonna go with Manu Bennett. Uh, Gerard Butler is fantastic, but he's, but Manu Bennett is just, how do you beat that, guys? Like, someone please write me an explanation in the comment section how you do better than Manu Bennett for for Craven the Hunter. I don't understand. Um, for me, it's Manu Bennett. Next up, we have Doc Ock, Patton Oswalt. That's a good choice. Um, versus Jeffrey Wright from Westworld and Shaft. Jeffrey Wright would be amazing. I think Jeffrey Wright's version would be very, very much like the PlayStation 4 Dr. Octopus. However, I think Patton Oswalt could give us a really comic book accurate uh, 
excuse me guys comic book accurate dr octopus um whether that is better than the playstation 4 or not i don't know i like both but i'm gonna go with jeffrey wright for this one all right and for rhino we've got conan stevens from game of thrones and the hobbit unexpected journey and john desantis from supernatural and a series of unfortunate events on netflix between the two of these guys i would prefer john desantis just look at his face look at his body the guy is a goliath um you can't do better for rhino look at this guy look at this guy john desantis has my vote i'm so proud of this guy he's huge all right next up we've got the lizard matthew good from the crown and downton abbey and john hawks from the peanut butter falcon and the perfect storm between the two of these guys this is tough to say I think I might go John Hawks. Possibly. Yeah, I'm going to go with John Hawks. You guys let me know who you like down below. And we have Electro, Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad and Need for Speed, and Damian Lewis from Band of Brothers and Homeland. Now, I want you guys to take a look at the mouth and nose of Damian Lewis and then compare that to the image we see of Electro above. It looks pretty similar very very similar indeed the chin the mouth the nose that all looks pretty darn accurate so as far as looks goes i think damian lewis has got aaron paul beat here but aaron paul we know has that personality he's got the ability to play a psycho like electro so i'm going to stick to old faithful and go aaron paul now let's take a look at the teams we've got Green Goblin, Colin Farrell, uh, I'm sorry, we've got Colin Farrell, Manu Bennett, Patton Oswald, Conan Stevens, Matthew Good, and Aaron Paul. After that, we have Brian Cranston, Gerard Butler, Jeffrey Wright, John DeSantis, John Hawks, and Damian Lewis. This is a tough one. Between the two of these, I am going to go with Team 2. I'm going to go with Brian Cranston, Gerard Butler, Jeffrey Wright, John DeSantis, John Hawks, and Damian Lewis because to me uh lot people that are just total locks for the role are Brian Cranston Jeffrey Wright John DeSantis those three right there completely solid and on the other side I only see I only see two locks for the role Manu Bennett and Aaron Paul and the rest I think will do very well but three locks versus two locks I'm going with three locks so to me it's team two let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Let me hear your favorites. Next up, we got FanCast Frenzy. Welcome back to the FanCasting Summit, FanCast Frenzy. All right. Please excuse me one second. I want to take a drink of my drink. That way I don't uh, dry out my throat and die. Okay. You guys would be shocked how dry your mouth gets when you talk for a couple of hours. <laughs> it's unbelievable. All right. So next up, we got Killian Murphy or Cillian Murphy. I don't know how you say that. Cillian or Killian? I like Killian better. Killian Murphy from Batman Begins and Peaky Blinders. Very, very good actor. And David Morrissey from The Walking Dead and Doctor Who. Uh, given the choice between the two of these guys, I think that Cill I think that Killian Murphy would do better as the uh as the goblin but david morrissey would do better as norman osborne and i think that is more important to me is getting norman osborne right because he's someone that you want not for a one-off film but you want him to stick around he's going to be like a he's got to be a doctor doom where he sticks around he's always in the fray you can't get rid of him he's always one step ahead so you can foil his plan but you can't take him down and that is what I want from Norman Osborn in the MCU. So I'm going David Morrissey. All right. So we have Craven the Hunter, Audrey Ivchenko from uh, Return of Xander Cage and Freezer, and Javier Bardem from Loving Pablo and No Country for Old Men. Between the two of these guys, I am going to go with Javier Bardem. I think he's the uh, I think this is the better choice. 
acting acting wise and uh looks i think he's got it on both fronts so to me it's clear javier bardem all right next we've got dr octopus jeffrey wright and what uh from westworld and shaft and bd wong from gotham and jurassic park i do think that bd wong would do a good job with dr octopus um but not as good as jeffrey wright so to me it's got to be jeffrey wright i'm going jeffrey wright all right now we have again uh for rhino andre ivchenko that's the second time we've seen him in this cast so clearly fan cast frenzy likes this guy <laughs> and, and also from freezer and dominic purcell from prison break and dc's legends of tomorrow i have not seen freezer and i have not seen return of xander cage um uh, i don't think i'm not even certain that i've seen andre ivchenko ever but i do think he looks like he could play rhino so no i can't judge him on acting ability so on acting i'd have to give it to dominic purcell but on looks i do think he would be pretty good for the role of rhino but so is dominic purcell so i'm gonna go with dominic purcell i know <laughs> you you cast him twice I don't want to. I don't want to go. Uh, I don't want to not pick him, but Dominic Purcell I think has the edge here, um, just because I don't know. But let me know in the comments here. Let me know in the comments if you guys like Andre Evchenko for this role. If you guys think, holy cow, that's a great choice. Of course you got to pick him. Uh, and I'm just crazy because I haven't seen these things. Let me know down in the comments below. All right, let's go to the lizard, Jeremy Irons from Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice and The Lion King, and Alessandro Giuliani from War of the Planets of the Apes and The 100 on CW. Both of these guys are amazing. Um, I think Jeremy Irons would be a really good Magneto. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about him though as Dr. Curtis Connors, but I do like Alessandro Giuliani as Dr. Curtis Connors. So I'm gonna go with Alessandro Giuliani. I bet you guys didn't see that coming. I'm choosing Alessandro. And let me know what you guys think down below. Electro, we have Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad and Need for Speed. And Robert Pattinson from The Lighthouse and Good Time. This is a really good cast. Um, between the two of these guys, I'm going to go with Aaron Paul still. I, it's probably frustrating for you guys watching me just like Aaron Paul, Aaron Paul. I'm actually not, I'm, I'm not a big Aaron Paul fan. But I am a fan of Aaron Paul for the role of electro i do think that fits perfectly so that's why to me it's like aaron paul I, I i don't i don't even watch breaking bad more than four episodes so i'm not a i'm not like oh it's got to be aaron paul you know like it's it there there are others but i do think that aaron paul would be better for this one just trying to explain so you guys don't think i'm just like hard biased for uh for aaron paul i just really i like him for this specific role um Okay, team one, Cillian Murphy, Andre Evchenko, Jeffrey Wright, Andre Evchenko again, <laughs> same team, <laughs> Jeremy Irons, and Aaron Paul. Team two is David Morrissey, Javier Bardem, B.D. Wong, Dominic Purcell, Alessandro Giuliani, and Robert Pattinson. Between the two of these teams, I am going to go with team two because uh, I like... David Morrissey is a lock for Team One for for uh, Green Goblin. Javier Bardem locked for Craven. Dominic Purcell is a lock for Rhino, and I think Alessandro Giuliani would be as good or better for for being the Lizard, in my opinion. Obviously, Jeremy Irons is wicked talent. He's crazy good. Probably even maybe a better actor in general than Alessandro. But Alessandro, I think, would play dr curtis connors very very nicely and i'd like to see that so team two is it for me let me know what you guys think down below in the comments dream fan cast welcome back to the fan casting summit my dude i love that picture by the way constantine chilling right there that's awesome man all right so we've got green goblin we got nick cage heck yes dude nick cage for green goblin dude all day i love nick cage um there's some actors that like you're like this guy sucks but you still watch their films and then you got some actors that are really good that make a ton of crappy films though like the films suck um and sometimes that's the actor's fault sometimes it's not when you have someone that's been in like 9999 films he's gonna have a bunch of stinkers in that pile you know what i mean 
So I, I really like Nick Cage, and he's no fan. Of, he's no, I mean, sorry, he's no stranger to superhero roles. He's been uh, Ghost Rider, and he's also been Superman in in live action in a film that never happened officially, and also as the voice actor for Superman in the Teen Titans Go to the Movies animated film that was a theatrical release. And um, he's also the voice of uh, Spider-Man Noir in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. So he's got tons of comic book history. Big fan. He named his son Kal-El, um, which is awesome. And John Carlo Esposito. So between the two of these guys, I'm actually going to go with Nick Cage on this, guys. Um, I think physically, he definitely looks the part. What he would have to work on, though, is not having soft eyes. If he could, if he could have a little bit more of a serious look, maybe just keep his chin down and look kind of up at everybody like this. That would be a little bit, a little bit better. Um, but I do think that he would be a really, a, with the right guidance and the right script, I think he could be a really solid uh, Green Goblin. John Carlos Pasito is the better act, though. <laughs> I'm not I'm not like blind to that. He's he's the better actor, but I like Nick Cage, so I'd like to see that. So, uh Craven the Hunter. We have Brendan Fraser uh from Doom Patrol and The Mummy and Jamie Foxx from The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and Baby Driver. Between the two of these, and I like Brendan Fraser. I might actually go with Jamie Foxx because Jamie Foxx to me I think he would have more of that hunter's edge. Uh, and I've said before, contextually, I do not want to change Craven uh, to an African hunter, but rather keep him as a hunter that hunts, a Russian hunter that hunts in Africa. Um, that's what he always has been. And I and not just for like, oh, he's always been this way, but like the MCU has already confirmed that his half-brother is in the MCU he's a Russian and I think it just makes sense to keep you know keep going in that direction it you know so to me it's Brendan I, I, I might go with Brendan Fraser but what the heck I'm gonna go Jamie Foxx he got screwed in Amazing Spider-Man 2 that Electro sucked so yeah Jamie Foxx all right uh Doc Ock Kevin James from King of Queens and here comes the boom and BD Wong from Jurassic Park and Gotham for the role of Dr. Octopus, uh, I'm gonna give it to BD Wong. I don't, I don't, I've never seen Kevin James do something that would make me feel confident to give him this role. Um, I'm sure that he could muster it up and do it, but it would be a surprise, a welcome, it would be a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Um, I just don't know that it would happen, so I'm going BD. All right, next up we've got Rhino. Jason Statham from Transporter and Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. And Dwayne Johnson from Ballers, Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. We've got both of the guys, both Hobbs and Shaw. And I think uh, if you had to choose between the two of these guys, I would go with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Um, and yes, just because he's going to be uh, in the DCEU as Black Adam, he is on contract. They've made, they're making the film as we speak. Um, they have a release date officially out. Um, that doesn't really mean anything though, because actors are not inhibited from doing both DC and Marvel. Um, it does somehow, uh, prevent them from crossing over. Maybe it's just bad relationships in, <laughs> that happen, but they're not legally prevented from doing that. Contractually, they're not, uh, obligated to stick to one. So I think Dwayne could and should play a role like that. I'm going to give it to Dwayne. And for the Lizard, we've got John Travolta from Pulp Fiction and The People vs. O.J. Simpson, in which he was really good. And Oscar Isaac from Triple Frontier and Star Wars The Force Awakens. I would give this role to Oscar Isaac for The for the Lizard. Definitely to Oscar Isaac for this one. John Travolta um, could be very good in a different role. Um, maybe even Craven, Craven the Hunter, but I would do Oscar Isaac for this one. Next, let's go Electro, Taylor Lautner um, from Abduction and Tracers, and John David Washington from Black, Black Klansman and Ballers. Um, between the two of these, I would definitely go with Taylor Lautner. He's actually really good at playing a crazy person. 
Um, and uh, if you guys have seen some of the stuff he's been in with like Adam Sandler, he does play crazy people a lot. But he's also an action guy. He, he's he's a martial artist, um, parkour dude, really really talented. I'd love to see him play this. Not that you need those types of skills specifically to play electro, because you don't. But um, like cable work and those types of things, he's no stranger to. John David Washington, I have not yet seen um, that kind of character be played so far. So I'm definitely play it safe and go with Taylor Lautner. All right, and here is the lineup. We've got Team 1, Nicolas Cage, Brendan Fraser, Kevin James, Jason Statham, John Travolta, and Taylor Lautner. For Team 2, we've got John Carlo Esposito, Jamie Foxx, B.D. Wong, Dwayne Johnson, Oscar Isaac, and John David Washington. This one's tough. Uh, I think the better acting talent is on the right side of the page. And... Uh, I'm going to go with team two. I'm going to go with team two on this one. I know I picked a bunch of people. I picked like Taylor Lautner, Nicolas Cage. Actually, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So I'm going to go with team two. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think that like people like Statham, Travolta, um, Frazier, Lautner, if these guys are locks for those roles and you choose team one or whatever your, whatever your preference is, let me know because I want to hear about those things in the comments down below and we can get talking about your favorite things. So Next up, we are getting close to the end of the Fan Casting Summit. Guys, thank you so much for joining us up to this point. This will be the last one before we get to the final results. Let's go ahead and take a look at my choices, my top two picks for the Spider-Man rogues in the MCU. We're going to take a look at my top two actors, and you guys will see some art that I did. I did some really rushed art, so please don't judge me too hard because I hate I literally, I was just trying to cram to get those artworks done so I could record this video for you guys. Um, it's been a long time coming. The casters will tell you it's been basically half a year. Um, and so I feel really bad about that. I rushed, I rushed through the edits, so don't judge me. Um, but nevertheless, I made them for you. So here we go. Christian Bale for Green Goblin from The Dark Knight and Vice and Jason Isaacs from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and The Patriot. Um, I think both of these guys would be really good. These are obviously my own choices, so there's no need to say that. But I think they'd be good because um, appearance, acting ability, they can play people that are politically conflicted, politically motivated, um, charming at first, but deceptive. They can play, both, both of these guys have experience playing roles like that. And I think both of them would look really, really good as both Harry, uh, sorry, Norman Osborn and the Green Goblin. Both of them would look amazing under both aspects of the character. So these are my top two choices. Let me know which one you guys prefer in the comments below. Next, for Craven the Hunter, we've got Manu Bennett from the Shannara Chronicles and Arrow CW. And we have Joe Manganiello from True Blood and Rampage. You guys also know him from, um, from uh, what's it called? The um, uh, Magic Mike. Uh, XXL and uh, I think both these guys look first of all they both look very similar both guys have played Deathstroke which was not why I picked them but uh, both of them look prime for the role they both played hunters they both played um, combat heavy roles and I think that these are the two best actors for the role possible and if you look at the image above they both look a striking deal like the source material and that to me is a big deal so not just because of the looks but because it will it will um it'll it'll mesh well with the history of the character being from russia he, who hunts in africa and also seeks to hunt out spider-man uh and looks like that so yep to me those are the guys let me know what you guys like more uh Manu bennett or joe manganello down in the comments all right now for dr octopus we have rain wilson from the office and the reign of superman who he plays uh lex luther and paul giamatti from uh john adams and saving private ryan both of these actors to me um look and feel a great deal like dr octopus now, Rain Wilson specifically to me feels like a comic accurate and animated series accurate version of the character Dr. Octopus, yet 
Paul Giamatti feels like the PlayStation 4 version of the character, which is more like the image above Paul Giamatti. I really like these guys. They would look the part, they would act the part, and I think they're great. So let me know who you like of the two of these down below in the comments. All right, for Rhino, we have John DeSantis from Supernatural and a series of unfortunate events, and Robert Maylett from Deadpool 2 and 300. Now, these guys are gargantuan. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe both of these gentlemen are above six foot seven or something crazy like that. I think one of them is seven feet tall. They're huge. These guys are massive. You would not have to even use CGI if you didn't want to, to make these guys rhino. They are giants. And they're both, they both look rough and tough and you wouldn't have to give them tons of lines. They could do it. They have, they've got plenty of roles where they, they act, they deliver their lines, they're convincing, they do their part. No problem there. But the role of Rhino is designed to be basically a human tank. Uh, and that's what these guys are. You've already got your guy. I say either one of these guys will work. Let me know which one you guys like down below. Better in the comments below. All right, and for the lizard, I've got, and this was probably my most rushed of all the art. Sorry guys, but it's, uh, you know, Matthew Fox from Lost and We Are Marshall and Aaron Eckhart from The Dark Knight and I Frankenstein. Both of these guys can play someone that is very sympathetic, very compelling. Um, you just pretend they've got their arm cut off and they're trying to help Spider-Man with whatever the symbiote or whatever he's dealing with at the time. And then he gets messed up himself and goes full Jekyll and Hyde with Crocodile Hyde. So I, I think both of these guys would knock it out of the park. We've seen Aaron Eckhart play a Two-Face before. And on Lost, there's a deal of hypocrisy that, that Matthew Fox deals with, his character deals with, um, in that show. And I, I think that he would be really, really good not just for connecting because in we are marshall he connects really really well with the youth on or the, the the players on the football team um and i think that would be really good for connecting with peter parker the way that he did that in that film but also um as a as a scientist as a doctor um he would do a really good job so both these guys to me are wins let me know what you guys think about these guys down below in the comments and finally, we get to Electro. Wilson Bethel was my first choice. Daredevil, Netflix, um, and from Heart of Dixie. Um, and Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad and Need for Speed. Now, both of these guys look the part to me. Both of these guys feel that way when they when they play crazy. And we did get a we we did get to see Wilson Bethel unleash a little bit, a lot of it in uh, Netflix's Daredevil, where he plays Bullseye. And Aaron Paul, uh, obviously in Breaking Bad, we get to see him unleash quite a few times. Um, I really do think that both these guys would be nothing but nothing but money for Marvel if you got them in this role. So I like both these guys. Let me know what you guys have to say about these guys, um, this edit, and who's your favorite down below in the comments below. And let's finally take a look at the overall teams. And you guys tell me which one's your favorite. So first, team one, Christian Bale, Manu Bennett, Rain Wilson, John DeSantis, Matthew Fox, and Wilson Bethel for team one. For team two, we have Jason Isaacs, Joe Manganiello, Paul Giamatti, Robert Maylett, Aaron Eckhart, and Aaron Paul. So if I had to pick between my two teams, I would pick team one. But I love my own second team. <laughs> which is like not news, I picked them. So um, yeah, I, I mean, to me, I like both of these. Please tell me which ones of these or which individuals from these teams you like the most. Do you think these work? Do you think these suck? Let me know and tell me in the comments below. And finally, finally guys, we are at the final results. And what this means is we have gone through everybody's individual castings, every one of the 18 fan casters involved with this making of this fan casting summit has cast two actors per role, six roles total. So now I've tallied up the total results for everybody. I've counted these in advance so that I could show you guys who the most wanted actor is 
for each of these roles so you can see who the general population wants most for this for the mcu villains let's take a look here are the most wanted actors to play the mcu spider-man rogues and the first most wanted actor to play the mcu norman osborne green goblin is a tie we have a tie for the most wanted actor to play green goblin between jason isaacs and matthew mcconaughey both actors received five votes i'm going to scoot over just a little bit so that i don't cut off the words here but five votes each for jason isaacs and matthew mcconaughey puts them at first and we also have in second place another multiple tie a five-way tie between colin farrell at two votes christian bale at two votes brian cranston at two votes john carlo esposito at two votes and david morrissey at two votes wow this is a really really good cast when you have a big five-way tie for second place that shows that there's actually not a ton of consensus that means that there's a lot of actors that people think could play these roles and when the most wanted actor has a number like five that means that most people have a, a different opinion when you have like a a bigger number like 10 or 15 for a single a single actor that means there's great consensus and most people are just looking at one guy so we actually have a wide variety of actors most people think could play these roles and i think this is really cool because that actually says we don't really know who marvel is going to is going to pick or going to want to pick um but if they get any one of these guys i'll be happy so yep let, i'm really excited about this let me know what you guys think about the most wanted actors to play green goblin down below in the comments and next we have the most wanted actor to play the mcu sergey kravenov craven the hunter is manu bennett number one most wanted actor to play craven the hunter is manu bennett with six votes that's really good i really love manu bennett this is my my art i mean i i i picked <laughs> i picked him myself but six people five others other than myself wanted manu bennett for the role of craven and the second place is joe manganello coming in at four votes another big consensus um so for second place four votes is a good consensus i think that's really really good both of these guys they were my picks but a number of you guys also picked both of these guys at the same time so i think a lot of people are seeing what we're seeing it's hard to deny the 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 striking visual similarities between not only these two actors together but each individual one and the source material craven the hunter both of them look like craven so it's really easy to see plus their resumes show that they are ready for a role like craven and that's really good so I, I really like this what do you guys think about this down below let me know in the comments next up the number one most wanted actor to play dr otto octavius or dr octopus is jeffrey wright with four votes most wanted actor to play dr octopus is jeffrey wright this is really surprising to me actually four votes is not a huge consensus but four votes is good especially when you have four other people coming in at second place with three votes each paul giamatti rain wilson both are my are picks that i voted for brian cranston and mark hamill all of these actors every single one i love for the role of dr octopus including jeffrey wright i really do think he'll knock it out of the park if he's given the role um be interesting to see if he does because he's going to be playing the watcher in the animated what if series so i think he could get away with it uh, have one animated and one live action that'd be really cool all right next up we have the most wanted the number one most wanted actor to play mcu alex o'hearn rhino is half thor julius bjornson at six votes that's a pretty solid consensus keep in mind guys there is only uh eight uh what was it 18 fan casters involved in this project six votes six twelve eighteen that's one third of every fan caster wanted this to be true so that's a pretty solid consensus uh second place goes to dominic purcell at five votes which i think is really good um also nothing to be uh disappointed about dominic purcell i think is a a clear and obvious choice for the role great actor great talent hard to argue with half or julius bjornson though look at the guy look at him 
It's ridiculous. And I love that. So uh, let's go on to the next one. Let me know what you guys have to say about the winner for Rhino as the most wanted actor down in the comments below. I want to hear your thoughts genuinely. First, the most wanted actor to play MCU Dr. Curtis Connors the Lizard is... Giancarlo Esposito. Giancarlo Esposito won with seven votes. That is, that's more than a third. Uh, more than a third of everybody wanted Giancarlo Esposito to play the lizard. And I think that's a good call. I think that's a solid call. The runner up is Aaron Eckhart with four votes. And I think that's also a good choice. So we even saw this matchup a few times with Giancarlo Esposito and Aaron Eckhart. Um, and I really like both of these casting choices. I hope one of these guys gets the role. That would be just awesome. So let me know what you guys have to say down below in the comments. All right. The first, okay, sorry. The most wanted actor to play MCU Maxwell Dillon Electro is, you ready? You ready? Here we go. Aaron Paul with 10 votes, 10 freaking votes. That's more than half. More than half of everybody that voted cast a vote saying, I want Aaron Paul as Electro. That is big. That's a big deal. And I think they're right. I think that Aaron Paul is a great, great choice to play this role in the MCU. And the runner up, oh, runner ups is second, a three way tie for second place Wilson Bethel uh, with three votes, Anthony Kerrigan, three votes, and Ben Foster, three votes. Every single one of those I love. I love every single one. Let me know which one you guys like the best down below in the comments. Do you guys like where this ended up? Do you guys like do you like one of the runner-ups better? Let me know. Tell me in the comments. All right, and let's take a look at the final roster. Here it is, guys. You can take a look at the most wanted actors to play the MCU Spider-Man Rogues in the next phase of Marvel. We have Norman Osborn is a tie between Matthew McConaughey and Jason Isaacs. Craven the Hunter is Manu Bennett. Dr. Octopus is Jeffrey Wright. Rhino is Hathor Julius Bjornsson. The Lizard is John Carlo Esposito. And Electro is Aaron Paul. Dang, I love this cast. I love this lineup. Let me know what you guys have to say about all these guys. Do you like how this ended? Do you like the votes that came in? Um... How do you feel about this lineup and who is your favorite of all of these choices? Talk to me in the comments and let me know what you have to say. Guys, thank you so much for sticking it all the way through to the end of the Fan Casting Summit number seven for the MCU Spider-Man Rogues. It means a whole lot to me that you guys came out, you contributed. Guys, you waited so long. I apologize for how long it took to get this Fan Casting Summit ready to shoot and edit and get up online. I, I really do. I'm sorry about that. It's just so crazy. Um, my schedule has changed dramatically um, in the last six months, and it's only going to get crazier as I got a third kid on the way. Uh, bear with me. Uh, I may not be able to do these every single month. I might have to do them bi-monthly to give myself a little extra time uh, or, or a little past that possibly, but I'm going to try to focus on fan casting content in 2019 for you guys because I love you guys. You're the best, and these are my favorite projects. So thank you, and I wanted to just say... Big, big thank you to everyone who participated. Make sure you guys go through this list. It's linked down below so you can just click on it. You can find these guys. Navewave88, Agent Fancast, Fancast247, Fancast3000, Jack's Fancast, Correct Rankings Fancast, Just Another Fancast Account, World of Fancast, The New Fancaster, Fancast Infinity, Reimagine Fancast, Fancast Power, Fancast Icon, Ultimate Fancast, Fancasting10, Fancast Frenzy, Dream Fancast, and myself, thank you guys so much for being a part of the Fan Casting Summit here on the Stuff of Legend show. You guys mean the world to me. I really appreciate you. I appreciate your guys' support all the time, watching the videos, leaving comments, talking to me on Instagram. Hey man, when's the summit coming out? It actually, it does my heart good to hear you guys saying those things because I, I actually, it makes me feel like you guys really want my content and that means a lot. It, it really does. And I appreciate you guys. Everyone who's watching this video, go give these guys a follow on Instagram. If you like fan casting, look no further. These guys are pros. They're super talented, super good, incredibly unique. These guys are the bomb. Follow them. 
and thank you guys so much um, for for being a part of this project. So, anyways, guys, that's pretty much what I wanted to say. But if you guys don't mind, um, I would really like to shift over and talk to you guys really quickly about how you can support my channel. So, if you guys want to support the stuff of legend, you can do it for free. All you got to do is like this video, share, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Those are the ways you can support me for free and help my channel grow. Um, if you guys want to support me financially and you want to get some merch for yourself, a mug, a t-shirt, a sweater, a hoodie, um, you know, like whatever, whatever it is you guys want, wall art, stickers, pins, magnets, tote bags, pillows, um, anything you guys want, I got it for you at my website. So you click on the link in my description and you can go and shop on tpublic.com. You can buy it yourself with your own card. It's not even from me per se. It's from tpublic.com. They use my designs and I get a cut of the profit, but you get some sick merch that's really, really good quality. I did not make those, but I made the designs myself and those help my channel grow because it'll fund me getting more, uh, more tech, more so better software, better lighting, better, you know, every, I can upgrade for you guys and get, get things that are going to produce content for you guys that is enjoyable to watch. Uh, and that means a lot to me too. So I, I appreciate that. But the best thing you can do for me is subscribe. That is the best thing you can do for me. So do that for me. Um, and however you want to support the channel, I really appreciate anything, including just watching the video that, that to me also speaks volumes. Um, so thank you guys. You guys are really the best. Anyways, um, if you guys haven't already, be sure to like this video, share it, leave a comment, tell me who your favorite casting was, favorite fan caster, favorite team, favorite choice. Do you like the results of the fan casting summit? The most uh, wanted actors. How did you like that ending? Tell me about these things below and let me know what you want me to fan cast next so that we can plan the next fan casting summit for you guys. Again, guys, um, you're the best. I could not do this without you. And I'm looking forward to a bright and vibrant 2019 um, where we can really take this thing and hit the ground running. You guys are the best. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.